Thank you for purchasing the Transmitter Solutions 800 standalone receiver. This video will go over the features and the programming of the 800 standalone receiver. Now, the first thing you'll need to do is apply power to it and the standalone can see either 12 or 24 volts AC or DC and it will auto detect that. Simply put the positive into the positive side, the negative into the negative side. It comes standard with this wire antenna. That should give you great range. If you need longer range, we do have an optional coax antenna that can be mounted outside. The LCD display will help you through the programming steps. This is not a waterproof receiver. It needs to be covered, so indoors or under an eaves where it will not get uh, too wet. It's a great uh, receiver for programming up to 800 remotes. You can go all the way up to a four button transmitter. It has two relays. One of them has a normally open and common input. The other one has a normally open and a normally closed input. Additionally, you can copy memory off of this to back up to an external source. And uh, the 800 standalone uses our rolling code 433 transmitter, so you get great range out of it and a great deal of flexibility. You can void and validate transmitters in here, and you don't just have to suspend them. You can actually delete them out of memory and free up that memory space, and it's very easy. You can block and code the transmitters as you're installing them, and we'll go over that. And everything is performed wirelessly using a master programming transmitter that looks like this. And it is carried out. Uh, the left button moves you through the different menu options and the right button confirms your choice. And if you push the left and right button at the same time, it takes you back one memory level. This is also password protected. We've got a little tape over the buzzer, and it'll buzz every time something happens just to reduce the noise a little bit while we're going through this. Uh, you may want to do that too. It's a little annoying at times. When you first receive the receiver, there will be no memory in it and no master programming transmitter will be stored in the memory. And so when you first get it and you have power applied, you need to teach the master programming transmitter into the receiver. That's performed quite simply. You push the two buttons together and it will say store master. You put the right one, which is yes. And now your master programming transmitter is installed in the receiver. The receiver is password protected from the factory. It comes default with a password of 11111, so five ones. And to get in there and to get into the main menu, you push both buttons of the transmitter, but master transmitter button, and you scroll through the numbers with the left button. As you can see, the first digit is going five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, back to one, and you confirm with the right button. And the next digit is the same thing. Scroll up to the one, yes, yes, yes. This shows you that you have 800 spaces available in the receiver on the top line. And this is the store user menu. Now to move through the menu lists, you do the left button. So this menu is the delete user and memory. Modify users if you want to change the transmitters. You can copy the memory, as I said, to an external source. You can configure the receiver, or you exit. So if we want to exit, you push the right, and you're back out right where you started. I'm going to show you now how to store a transmitter into the memory. Again, the first thing is we go into the programming by putting in our password. And I want to store user memory, yes. Now, there's a default serial number there, and the transmitter I want to store in has a serial number of 06390. There are two ways to do this. We can either do it manually, so we would say 0 is the first digit, 6 is the second digit, 3 is the third digit, 9 is the fourth digit, and zero is the last digit. Now we can either choose to have both relays activated with that transmitter or relay one, relay two, and it cycles through. I would like the first relay to be transmit, uh, triggered off of this transmitter so I confirm and then 
key A is button 1, key B is button 2, key C is button 3, key D is button 4. I would like it to just be the first button, so I'm going to confirm that A is the key that I want. But again, you can see that you can cycle through options. And it'll say, are you storing a single transmitter? The answer is yes. We'll show you how to block code a little later. We put that in. We're back to the store user menu. Now let's just exit out by going cycling to the exit menu and hitting OK and seeing how we did. You can hear the relay click. The display shows you that relay 1 is clicking, key A, and shows you the serial number of the transmitter. I'm going to show you now a little easier way to put in a two button transmitter rather than cycling through the numbers. So we'll go back into the menu, store user menu, yes, and now instead of cycling through and putting in a number, let's get a different transmitter. So this transmitter serial number is 06389. I simply push the second button of the transmitter and you'll see that the number went up into the display. Now that's the correct transmitter, so I'm going to hit yes on my master programming. I want it to be relay 1, key A, and I want to store a single. And now, when I exit out, I have two transmitters programmed in. There's the one we just programmed. There's the second one. Very simple. Now obviously if you were programming in 800 transmitters, putting them in one at a time would become fairly tedious and so the 800 standalone has the ability to block code. So I'm going to put in 10 transmitters right now by block coding it. Again, you go into the programming mode, put in our password, store memory, yes. Now I'm going to put in the first serial number. Again, I could push the button. My first serial number is 58201. So I'm going to cycle through to there. And they're in the box, so I don't have the button to push. And since I'm block coding them, I'm willing to do this the slow way. 58201. I want it to activate relay 1 for all of these. And I want it to activate off of the first push button. And I'm going to store a single no. And so no is the left button in this instance. Now it says, how many are you going to store? Well, I'm not going to store 798, which is how many spaces I have left. I'm going to cycle 2, and I'm going to put this to 0 because I'm going to do 10. Oops, I missed it. Well, missed it again. I should pay attention. There we go. Now I'm going to hit yes, so I'm going to store 10. Are you sure you want to store 10? Again, the right is yes, always. And I now have 10 transmitters that I just block coded to fire off of relay 1 using the first button. This also tells you the space I have available now. I'm down to 788 spaces available, which is a really nice feature. And again, we can exit out by hitting the left button to go to the exit menu, hitting yes, and now the receiver is ready to use. It's that simple. Now we'll go over how to delete a transmitter from memory. Go into the programming mode. And cycle through to the next menu level with the left button, which is the delete user menu, yes. And do I want to delete a user? So again, it's a question. We answer yes with the right push button. This is asking which serial number we want to delete. And so you need to know the serial number of the one you wanted to delete. And we can do it, again, one of two ways. By manually entering our number, which is 0, 6, 3, 8, Are you sure? It will ask you if you want to make sure you're, you're sure you want to do that. Yes is the answer. So now I want to go and exit out. And this transmitter, as you can see, it shows relay question mark, meaning it's 
it sees the number obviously because the, the receiver can see it, but it is not opening because it's a void transmitter. That's one way to delete it. The second way, back into programming, go into the delete user menu, which is the second one down. Yes. Do I want to delete a user? Yes. Is to hit the right button of a two button transmitter. Automatically fills in the number. I confirm that I want it to delete. I answer the second time it asks. I go out to the exit menu and that transmitter is no longer in there. There are a couple of other sub-menus for within the delete menu and let's look at those quickly. So we go back to the delete user menu. Do I want to delete a user? No. Again, no is the left one. Do I want to delete all users? So this clears out all the users but maintains the master transmitter uh, that's in your receiver or master transmitters. You can have multiple and uh, keeps your password. If I want to initialize the receiver, that restores it to its factory default. So if you change passwords, if you put in master transmitters, it takes them all out with this initialize uh, receiver. And then you're back to the beginning. The next menu is the modify user menu. You should be getting pretty good at going into the programming menu now. So we'll go to the third layer, third menu down, which is a modify user. We'll say yes. And we want to modify user again. You can input it manually or you can click the right button. Say yes. The serial number is not in memory and that's because we deleted that transmitter. So if we want to backtrack, you push both buttons at the same time and it takes you back one menu step. We want to go back I was back at the root menu. So I want to store the user again. Yes. I want to store this transmitter. I want it to work for relay. Now if you leave relay 1 and 2, that means that key A is assigned to relay 1, key B is assigned to relay 2 automatically, but I want to do it to relay 1 with key A. I'm going to store a single one and I'm okay now. And I'll show you how this will work. So now we want to modify it. So I want to go again to the modify user menu and I could manually type in this serial number. It happens to be defaulting there or I can push the right button so that's the one I want. So I hit yes. I can disable this user meaning suspend the transmitter if it's if it's going to be gone for three weeks and you just want to have some security. Oops, I don't want to do that. I hit yes on accident. I want to go back. Modify user. Disable user no. Um, do I want to change the relay or a key? Well, let's just say we do. We want to change it to where this transmitter now opens relay 2. And uh, we want to still have relay 2 open off of key A. And so now this transmitter, when we exit out, as you can see, it's now opening relay 2 when it was opening relay 1 before. I want to put that back the way that it was so we can continue the demonstration. No. Relay or key, yes. I want to go back to relay one. And it's executed. Okay. And those are all of the uh, menu choices in Modify User. You can call, uh, I'm down there. Let's go back to the Modify user, you put in the user that you want to modify, you approve it, and then you can either disable, or if it were disabled, it would ask if you wanted to enable it. You can change the relay or key that is uh, activated when you push them, and disable the user. So those are your choices. Now we'll go back a step. Now if you want to uh, go into the copy and data transfer menu, this has some nice features as well. So let's go to the copy memory menu. This one allows you to see what is in memory on your display and so you would say yes and you would cycle up 
that's your first user second third user so the right button on the master programming transmitter will show you the serial number of the transmitter the relay that it's firing and the key that is activated when it's done so you can do an inventory of the transmitters and that tells you your last user okay now to back out of that back in the copy memory let's look again deeper in the copy memory we've looked at the display you can hook this up to a serial printer that you can purchase from Transmitter Solutions. It needs to be online. The printer needs to be online all the time and it will print out the time and uh, I'm sorry, it will print out the user number and the serial number and the relay that was fired and the keys and uh, it tells you all that information and prints it on this printer. The printers are really expensive um, it's fairly impractical, but you do have that option if a customer insists on it. This is a feature that is disabled right now for end users, but it allows you to substitute transmitters electronically. And then you can copy memory to a backup, which is a really neat feature. Let's spend a minute on that. Okay, copy memory on a backup. You can purchase from Transmitter Solutions a memory backup drive. And it looks like this. And those four pins plug into the four pins here on the receiver. And you plug those in, and then it timed out, so I've gone back to being out of the system. I need to go back in. Copy memory. And copy memory on a backup, yes. Memory in use, erase content, so there's something on that chip, yes. And it goes in and it's copied everything onto this backup drive. You can now remove this backup drive, and if your memory is ever destroyed, uh, if the transmitter has problems, you can bring this back out and you can restore off of this uh, through a restore function that I'll show you in just a moment. But that's really a neat, inexpensive way to store data uh, memory. Also, if you've got a couple of receivers where you want the same exact information, you can copy it onto this and move it over to the individual receivers and restore, and then they're all synced up by just transferring this around. The next menu is the receiver configuration menu. Now, in the configure receiver uh, menu, you can change your password from the default of 11111 by hitting yes here. It allows you to do that. You can configure the relay. So let's configure relay 1, which is something you'll probably do quite a bit. Right now, it's in the pulse mode, so it's momentary. You can go into a toggle mode, so have a latching, which would take an activation push of the transmitter to turn it on and to turn it off. There's a time six seconds, meaning that after you release the transmitter button, the relay stays on for six additional seconds if you need some sort of a delay for a pedestrian opening. The last one is a short range, so if you had this on a pedestrian gate and you needed to reduce the range from which the receiver would receive a signal, you would go to short range. Uh, the short range reduces the sensitivity of the receiver by about 40 decibels which causes a very big reduction in the radio range. It gives you a final range of about 30 feet. Still quite a bit of range typically, but not when you're comparing it to three and 400 feet that you can get an open uh, air. And so if you need to have a shortened range, read range, or you've got receivers next to each other, this is a good option. So we'll back out of this by hitting both. We're in the con configure receiver menu, we'll hit yes. And the password we're satisfied with, so we won't change that. And we've looked at the relay configuration. Um, it'll ask you about relay 2, so you can configure relay 1 or 2. Now, you can put in two facility codes into this receiver, so as it comes from the factory, it is defaulted to accept any facility code of the 433 rolling code. If you need a higher level of security, there are two facility codes you can put into the 800 standalone receiver, and it will perform a facility code check before checking the serial number against the database. So you can put facility code 1 here that you would like checked and facility code 2 here that you would like checked. So up to two different facility codes. 
Other than that, you would have to ignore the facility code. That's all there is to programming the 800 standalone receiver. The next menu deep is the exit menu, which moves you out and allows you to use the receiver as you would like. This is really the most simple receiver to program for deletion, to add block code, to configure your relays. It's a really great receiver. Very versatile, holds 800 memory, a true 800. You don't lose those spaces. And uh, so I would really recommend this for most of your installations. It gives you ultimate control and can all be done wirelessly, which is so much easier than trying to fumble through the keypad. I was going to show you how to do a restore off the, menu, off the memory chip. So let me do that really quickly before we end. So we're going to go into the copy memory. This is this next one down is copy memory from a backup. So you would simply insert the pins in. It may short it out. You can do this hot. This is not a problem, but it takes you back to the main menu. So you push that in. I believe I have it in all the way. Copy menu, copy memory on a backup, copy memory from a backup, yes. Memory in use, erase contents, yes. So it's just overridden everything in your receiver with what you had on the memory. Really nice, easy backup solution for a standalone receiver. Thank you for purchasing Transmitter Solutions 800 standalone receiver. I, I guarantee you're going to enjoy this receiver. You're going to get great range, great flexibility for programming, and the ability to have a backup. It's just a great receiver. Good luck with it.